functions tell us about what's going on in the real world. We use them to describe things that happen, but most things that happen don't boil down nicely into just one step. What do we do? We want to take two functions and compose them together. That means we work with one function and then we work with the other. We've seen the beginning of this in Jim's video about making new functions from old ones. But we want to look more at what's going on both with algebra and to really understand the process. So we have a couple of goals for this video. First, how do I compose functions? And second, when am I allowed to compose functions? Let's start with an example. Here's our first example. We're given two functions. The first one, f of x, is equal to x squared plus x minus 4. The second one, our function g of x, is equal to x plus 1. What I want to do is find f composed with g of x. So this thing, f, and then the little circle, and then g, means f composed with g. And I can either read it as composed or f of g of x. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is understand what is f composed with g of x. So f composed with g of x means that I take f of g of x. I like to write small parentheses around the g of x and large parentheses around the f of x to remember which one is which. So what am I going to do? Well, these instructions, if I understand what functions mean, is that f is being applied instead of to x to the g of x function. So what I do is I take the g of x and I plug it in to the f everywhere I had the x. So in this case, I have f of g of x up here is x plus 1. So I want to take a f of x plus 1. Well, what do I get? Everywhere I have x, I plug in instead x plus 1 in my definition of the function f. So this is... Well, what does f do? It takes the input, x, and squares it, so x plus 1 squared. Then I add the input again, x plus 1, and then I subtract 4. Okay, so what I want to do now is simplify this expression to figure out what is f composed with g of x. So the first thing that I do is figure out what is this x plus 1 squared, well, there's two ways to do that. Either I use the FOIL acronym, if you've heard that before, or I write down two copies of x plus 1 and make sure to distribute. Plus x plus 1. I don't need the parentheses because there's nothing interesting happening there. If I simplify this guy, I get x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus another x plus 1 minus 4. So simplifying, I have x squared. Here's 2x. Here's another x. That's 3x plus 1, plus 1, minus 4, that happens to be plus 2. So this thing is the answer, x squared plus 3x plus 2, and that is what f composed with g of x is equal to. I want to be particularly careful when it comes to these things, because even though I write down f composed with g of x, the thing that I actually do is plug first into g of x and then into f. We'll see another example of this in a couple of minutes. So now we understand how to use algebra to compose two functions. What if I'm not just interested in the definition of the function, but the value of the composition at some point? We'll examine that in the next example, being really careful to talk about what the domain of the composition is. It's not necessarily what you expect, and we have to be pretty careful. So here's our second example. I'm given a different function f, this time f of x is equal to the square root of x, and I'm given a different function g as well. g of x in this case is equal to x minus 1. I want to figure out what is f composed with g evaluated at 1, at 17, and at negative 4. So let's just try to go ahead and work this out. The first one, I have f composed with g of 1. So we learned in our first example that, that this means f of g of 1, like so. And so what I want to do is plug in g of 1 to the function f. 
All right, well, so what is g of 1? g of 1 <coughs> is equal to g of 1. Everywhere I have x, I plug in 1, so I have 1 minus 1 or 0. So I plug this in to the function f, which means that f composed with g of 1 is f of g of 1. So in this case, that's f of 0. So when I plug in 0 everywhere, I have an x in the f function. So this is the square root of 0 or 0. So f composed with g of 1 is equal to 0. Again, note that first I plug into the function g, and then I plug that result into the function f, even though they're written in the opposite order. I have f composed with g of 1, so first I plug into g, and then I plug into f. Sometimes we call this working inside out. Let's do part b. So part b of the function asks us to find f of g of 17. Well, what do I do? I plug in 17 to g and then plug in the result to f. So this is f of g of 17, which in this case is f of, well, g of 17 is 17 minus 1, which is f of 16. f takes the input and takes the square root of it, so I have the square root of 16, which is 4. That means that f composed with g of 17 is equal to 4. Okay? Now, the last example we have is to find f composed with g of negative 4. So what am I going to do? Well, f composed with g of negative 4, we use the same process, is f of negative 4 minus 1, which is f of negative 5. And what f does is takes the input and takes the square root so this is the square root of negative 5. Uh-oh, we can't actually take the square root of a negative number. So f composed with g of negative 4 can't be evaluated. In other words, negative 4 is not in the domain of f composed with g. It's in the domain of g, but not in the domain of the composition. Because once I evaluate g of negative 4, I cannot plug that thing into f. Okay? So the moral of the story <coughs> is that the domain of f composed with g is all values of x, which are in the domain of g because I have to be able to evaluate the function at g first, <coughs> and which also have g of x in the domain of f. So now we have the whole idea. When we're looking at compositions of functions, you always want to make sure to be particularly careful about the domain especially since something happens when we go through the first function before we go through the second function. So, always make sure that the output of the g function, your first function, will go into the f function, your second function. Make sure you do a bunch more practice exercises to get a hold of this concept. Good luck!